so far we learned about what is microprogramming and how do we do microprogramming let us make the concepts clear by considering a design example consider the design of a microprogrammed control unit for 4x4 boots multiplier the very first step in microprogramming is to write a microprogram in a symbolic form so this is the symbolic form or uh, this is the microprogram which is written for the 4x4 boots multiplier the program which is shown in this slide is identical to the register transfer description which was discussed earlier there is one to one correspondence between the register transfer description of a task and its microprogram implementation each line of the above symbolic program is stored as a word in the control memory whose address is specified as an integer number for example the word stored in the control memory address 0 activates operations like clearing the accumulator loading the multiplicand into the m register loading the operand size 4 into the l register similarly the word stored at in the control memory address 4 implements an unconditional branch instruction go to right shift the control memory is able to hold 13 words requiring a 4 bit branch address in this task three conditions that is q of 1 q of 0 equals 0 1 q of 1 q of 0 equals 1 0 and z is equal to 0 are checked these conditions are applied as inputs to the condition select mux Additionally a logic 0 and 1 are applied as data inputs to this mux to take care of no branch and unconditional branch situations respectively Therefore we find that a mux is able to handle five data inputs and it must be at least 8 is to 1 multiplexer The size of the condition select field must be 3 bits wide A 3 bit condition select field gives eight distinct 3 bit patterns however only the first five 3 bit patterns are used to encode the five different conditions encountered in this problem with this design the condition select field may be interpreted as shown in this slide so when the condition select bits are 0 00 branching doesn't takes place if it is 001 001 then branching takes place if q of 1 is 0 and q of 0 is 1 if the condition select bits are 0 1 0 then branching takes place if q of 1 is 1 and q of 0 is 0 if the condition bits are 0 1 1 then branching takes place if z is equal to 0 if the condition bits are 1 00 then unconditional branching takes place with these details the size of the control word can be found as the size of the condition select field that is 3 bits size of branch address field that is 4 bits and number of control functions which we have already seen earlier that is 10 so altogether we find that it is 17 bits hence the size of the control memory data buffer and the control memory can be 17 and 221 bits respectively The complete hardware organization of the control unit is shown in the diagram which is represent which is uh, shown in the slide. So we find that there is a 13 cross uh, 17 control memory. The control word word is uh, taken from this particular memory which is 17 bits. The initial 3 bits will be the condition select bits which are given as inputs to the 8 is to 1 multiplexer. and if there is a branch then 4 bit branch address is also extracted from the control memory data buffer and the remaining 10 bits will give the control signals so whenever there is a sequential execution flow we find that uh, uh, the output of the mux will be the increment bar signal given to the memory uh, program counter over here my uh, micro program counter Yeah, if there is a branch then the branch address will be loaded into the um, microprogram counter and the multiplexer will give the load signal to the microprogram counter so the output of the mux depends upon whether it is zero or whether it is high for no branch and unconditional branch uh, conditions 
and depending upon q of 1 q of 0 and z depending upon the values we have the mux output from the input 1 2 and 3 we have to now consider the production of binary microprogram which have to be stored in the control memory as mentioned earlier for each line of the symbolic program listing there is a control word which exists for example consider the first line of the symbolic listing shown previously the instruction introduces no branching therefore the condition select field should be 000 thus the contents of the branch address field are irrelevant however the contents of this field can be reset to 0000 without any loss of generality in this instruction three micro operations c0 c1 and c2 are activated therefore only the corresponding bit positions in the control function field are set to 1 this results in the binary micro instruction as shown in the slide so condition select bits are 000 there is no branching therefore it is reset and the contr control function we need only c0 c1 c2 to be activated only those will be enabled and the remaining are 0 0 the binary micro instructions corresponding to the 10th line of the symbolic micro program does not activate any micro operations therefore all bits of the control function field must be reset to 0 since the branching is based on the value of external condition variable z, the condition select field must be set to 0, 1, 1. If the condition is met, the program control must branch to execute the micro instruction whose symbolic address is loop. Since this label appears in the line number 2 of the symbolic listing with the branch address as 2, that is 0, 0, 1, 0. The value of the branch address field must be 0, 0, 1, 0 the following binary micro instruction will be obtained condition select bits will be 0 1 1 branch address will be 0 0 1 0 and since there is no branching or it is just the halt of the program we tell the con the control signals all are reset to 0 continuing in the similar manner the complete binary program can be produced which is shown in the slide so this is the address in decimal, this is in binary, this is, this is the condition select bits, what should be the values in order to select the multiplexer inputs and these are the branching address depending on whether it is a sequential or a non-sequential branching. So now we are familiar with the two approaches of designing a control unit that is the hardware approach and the microprogramming approach. Let us summarize few concepts related to them. The inclusion of the control ROM carries overhead such as hardware production cost for masking the bits in the control ROM. A control memory may reduce the overall speed of the system because micro instruction retrieval process takes a significant amount of time. The very important advantage of microprogramming is it gives us a structured control organization. During the design of a system, improvements are thought of and accidental deletions uh, are discovered. But uh, with microprogramming, many additions and changes are made by simply changing the microprogram in the control memory. Whereas a small change in the hardware approach may lead to redesigning of the. Although we find hardware uh, approach to be economical for obtaining a simple control algorithm, the cost of the control logic increases with the system complexity. Whereas in microprogrammed implementations, the cost of the simplest system is high. Uh, though adding new features only requires additional control memory. Microprogramming also simplifies documentation and service training of the system, which results in the reduced total system cost. Every computer system requires a package of diagnostic routines for checking, locating, and isolating hardware malfunctions. If you are using microprogramming, these routines can also be stored in the control memory. So this completes the se uh, section for learning about microprogramming of control units. Thank you.